Why do we use different types of sugar in gelato and not only sucrose, which is table sugar? Welcome to this new video of the Gelato Expert Academy. I'm Luca Musolesi and today I want to show you some experiments with different combinations of sugars. In a previous video we saw the effects of using dextrose to replace part of sucrose. But what happens if we add a third type of sugar, or better, a mix of carbohydrates like maltodextrin or glucose syrups? This is very common in gelato because each type of sugar contributes to the texture sweetness and freezing point of gelato in different ways. By using a blend of sugars we can achieve different results in terms of sweetness, creaminess, melting behavior and other parameters that might be important to us. Just as a brief introduction, I want to give you an idea of what are the main properties of the different types of sugars. Sucrose is the sugar we all know and use basically everywhere and it's usually the main sugar in gelato because of its pleasant sweet flavor and the ability of increasing other flavors. Dextrose is a sugar that is less sweet than sucrose but with a higher antifreeze capacity. As we said in the previous video, this helps us obtaining a gelato with smaller ice crystals during the freezing phase. Maltodextrin or glucose syrup are not really one sugar but they are a mix of several types of carbohydrates and the final product is way less sweet than sucrose but also doesn't affect the freezing point as much. So the biggest benefits of glucose syrups can be seen after the freezing phase since they can provide a warmer mouthfeel and a longer shelf life to the gelato. Now if you want to learn more in detail about sugars and their properties you can check out our online school the Gelato Expert Academy of which you can find a link in the description. But for now let's move on and prepare some experiments. What we are going to do is to test four standard gelato recipes where we change the types and quantity of sugars. We start with only 90% of sucrose, then we will have 12% sucrose and 7% of dextrose, then 12% sucrose and 7% maltodextrin, and finally a test with three sugars with 12% sucrose, 3.5 dextrose and 3.5 maltodextrin. Now we are going to prepare these mixes, freeze them and then we can perform some tests and tastings of course. As always what we can measure is the overrun just out of the patch freezer and then we will blast chill the samples and after 24 hours we will measure the hardness and then perform a sensor evaluation to see what are the differences in flavor and texture. Finally, we can repeat the hardness measurement and the sensor evaluation after 72 hours and the last test that we can perform is a melting analysis. Now let's have a look at the recipes and the differences between them, especially in, it, in their freezing point and uh, important parameters. Okay, so now let's have a look at the base of the gelato that we will use to prepare our samples, first only with sucrose and then with dextrose, then with maltodextrin and then with both sucrose, dextrose and maltodextrin. So you can see here it's our standard recipe that we always use, milk, cream, sucrose, dextrose, maltodextrin and then skim milk powder and the standard stabilizer for gelato. Parameters are very standard, 9% of fats and then sugars we are just below 25%. Uh, this is formulation sugars and it includes uh, lactose of course so without lactose it would be around uh, probably 19 percent of uh, sugars the main parameters are total solids just above 38 percent and the freezing point minus 2.97 so this is uh, the first sample it's only sucrose and 19 percent then if we go to the next test is sucrose and dextrose, 12% and 7% and no maltodextrin yet. And what happens is basically that we change the freezing point drastically. From minus 2.97 we go to minus 3.5. Then in the next test what we are going to do is to use sucrose 12% and maltodextrin at 7% but no dextrose. So this brings actually up the freezing point to minus 2.37 so it actually brings down the PAC and it also has an impact on sweetness of course but this is something we want to see in the sensor evaluation more than on the numbers and for the final test what we get is 12% of sucrose 3.5% dextrose and 3.5% of maltodextrin so a combination of three types of sugar what we have eventually is a freezing point that is very comparable to the first product with only sucrose, similar amount of solids, of course, a similar amount of total sugar, same amount of fats, not much changes, 
Of course, also the sweetness might change a little bit, because if we see the sucrose equivalence, we started only sucrose at uh, uh, 200 for sucrose equivalence, and now we bring it down in the final test to 160 or something like that. So it should be a little bit less sweet. Okay, let's now prepare our samples of the different gelatos. We have now prepared all of our four samples, uh, freeze them and then uh, tested them uh, and tasted them of course. Uh, the first sample is only with sucrose, the second sample is with sucrose and dextrose, the third one is sucrose and maltodextrin and the last one is sucrose, dextrose and maltodextrin. So now let's have a look at the result and see what are the differences between these four samples. In terms of overrun, we see immediately that the sample with only sucrose and the maltodextrin was the one with the lowest overrun. And the two with the highest overrun were the one with the most dextrose and the one with dextrose and maltodextrin. So if you want to increase the overrun, you don't necessarily need to put only a lot of dextrose, but you can use a combination of dextrose and maltodextrin or glucose syrups, for example. Then after extraction and measuring the overrun, we put our samples in, uh, in the freezer at uh, minus 18 with an actual temperature of the gelato of minus 17. And after 24 hours and 72 hours, we performed other tests. One above all, the hardness test and the melting test. In terms of melting, what is obvious is that the sample with sucrose and maltodextrin only is the slowest uh, at melting. In terms of shape retention, there's not much a difference between the four samples, but in terms of uh, melting rate, yes. Uh, the second best is the one with uh, sucrose, dextrose and maltodextrin. While the two samples with only sucrose and the one with sucrose and dextrose only, they melt quite a bit faster and at a faster rate. In terms of hardness, uh, after 24 hours, uh, we see that the sample with uh, dextrose and sucrose is the softest, while the sample with uh, uh, dextrose and maltodextrin is the hardest. And actually this you can already see it at extraction from the batch freezer. While the sample with only uh, sucrose is a bit uh, softer than the one with sucrose and maltodextrin, and the one with sucrose, dextrose and maltodextrin, it's quite a bit closer to the one of sucrose and dextrose, but still a little bit harder. After 72 hours, however, we see that the sample with only sucrose uh, it's actually softer than the one with sucrose, dextrose and maltodextrin. We see a big increase in the uh, hardness of the samples with maltodextrin, however, especially the one with only sucrose and maltodextrin. So this uh, gives us an idea of what to expect when we put maltodextrin in a product that has a longer shelf life than one day, of course. In terms of flavor and sweetness, we have a big difference between the sample with only sucrose and the sample with only sucrose and maltodextrin. There is a difference in flavor, of course, the one with the sucrose is much more milky, and the one with sucrose and maltodextrin is definitely less sweet, is the lowest sweetest of all of these four samples, and it's also less milky, maybe more neutral. It is also, however, a little bit of a chewy texture, even though we didn't change anything in the stabilizer, but having this quantity of uh, maltodextrin gives you more of a um, chewable uh, gelato, even though it still melts in the mouth uh, quite easily. 
in the one with dextrose we can feel or perceive a little bit if we taste side by side the flavor of dextrose while in the one with maltodextrin and dextrose it's quite balanced the flavor not too milky not too sweet but also the sweetness is not such a huge difference from the one with only uh, sucrose it's just a little bit of a different uh, flavor actually and less mm, milky in terms of texture we see a big difference after 72 hours where the sample with uh, only sucrose but also the sample with sucrose and only dextrose they are definitely more icy colder and uh, a bit more crumbly while the one with only maltodextrin and sucrose and the one with the sucrose dextrose and maltodextrin they are definitely softer uh, in the mouth, smoother and creamier, with smaller ice crystals and a more warm mouthfeel. So, as a recap, uh, what happens uh, when we substitute sucrose with other sugars uh, is that we change uh, the flavor profile for sure, but up to a certain point. The sweetness, especially if we substitute a big quantity of sucrose with something like maltodextrin that doesn't bring much sweetness, but the big difference we notice it especially in the storage after more than a few hours or a day and in terms of texture and iciness and creaminess that is much better preserved when we have maltodextrin or glucose syrups in our recipe. If you have other questions about uh, the use of different sugars, uh, you can check out our online academy and if you want me to do other tests uh, in the lab, just let me know in the comments. If you like this video and you want to see more like this, uh, like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn more about other sugars like inverse sugar or honey or trellos, check out our full online course at the Gelato Expert Academy, link in the description. For now that's all, see you in the next video.